All right, so coming to a seated posture, grabbing a pillow or a block or something like that if you want to bring yourself up a little bit if the, tip, the hips are feeling tight and you can just find a comfortable seat. And once you get there, you wanna just let the knees drop as much as possible. That's why sitting up a little higher makes that more accessible. And just maybe take a couple deep breaths as you lengthen the spine. We typically need to tuck the chin just a little bit because we let our head rest back and this will lengthen the spine even if along the back of the neck. You can choose if you want palms down or palms up. Palms down is a bit of grounding, palms up maybe just receive some energy. Maybe sighing out a few breaths, taking a deep inhale through the nose. Let's do one more of those. And then if it's available for you, you can seal the lips and allow the breath to flow in and out through the nose. Beginning to take deep, full breaths, filling the belly and the chest with air. As you exhale, pushing all the air out before you take that next inhale. Making sure the shoulders are relaxed. And you can begin to try to even the inhale and the exhale, maybe even using the tool of the counting the breath trying to make the breath at least four counts deep. And if it's in your practice, inviting that ujjayi breath or that slight restriction to the back of the throat to make the breath audible. And just reveling in this gift you've given yourself on the mat here today. You simply just have to breathe and allow yourself to surrender to all the work that the brain will want to do. And instead, take a moment to find a more worthy cause for the brain for this next hour giving it an intention to focus on, maybe a dedication to someone or something that needs the energy or possibly something for yourself, something to focus on, something to release, something to bring you some more strength. Making your own little mantra here. Keeping the eyes closed, we're going to inhale the arms up overhead. And exhale, bring the hands to heart center, bowing the head down. We begin to rub our palms together, creating some heat and energy. And then just covering the eyes, bring the head up, begin to flicker the eyes open. And release the hands back down to the knees, this time palms down on the knees. And just taking a couple circles here, we'll just wake up the spine and the hips flowing. So as you inhale, you're going to bring yourself forward and really push those shoulders down. As you exhale, push all the air out, really in cave the belly. and switching directions. Not worrying too much about, you know, am I doing this on the inhale or the exhale properly? Just really think about and dedicating, um, taking full deep breaths and moving with that breath. 
coming back to center. You're gonna inhale the arms up once more. This time, gaze up to the thumbs. Let the head drop all the way back. Really open the throat. As you exhale, let the right hand come down to the side and reach across. Take a nice side stretch on that left side body. Inhale, come back through center. Gaze up. Let the chin drop or point up towards the ceiling. Exhale, reach over. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, warming up the neck and the side body. Exhale, reach. Inhale, up. Exhale. Coming back to center. Inhale, up. Exhale, bring the hands down and tuck the chin deeply into the chest. Feel that stretch along the back of your neck and release to neutral. We're gonna take the right leg on top of the left. So it's a, I call it pretzel pose. I'm sure it has a much more studious name than that. But you basically are working on stacking your knees on top of each other. So it takes a little bit of wiggle and then you wanna to try to get both sits bones down. So probably when I do this, I would naturally lean over to the left side, but you wanna lift the bum up, try to tuck the cheeks a bit and get on those sits bones and sit nice and tall. And then you can, you know, your knees might be up here. They might be, your feet might be out. We're just finding this spot that works for you here. And then you've got a couple options with the arms. Option one is you're gonna reach for opposite elbow. And since we haven't warmed up the shoulders very much, this is probably what's gonna be comfortable for most of us. Um, you could also uh, come into reverse prayer, but um, if you feel any pain in the elbows or anything, Let's just take it easy at the start of our practice. So we're gonna reach back to what feels good for you. Inhale, nice and tall. And as you exhale, bow forward on top of that right leg best you can. If you can completely compress down onto that leg, then also drop the neck in head. As long as it feels good, if you're up here and dropping the head, it might not feel totally like you can release there. So do what feels good for your body. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. We're just gonna switch the legs. So bring that right leg on the bottom, left leg on top. And then kind of lift and tuck, sit nice and tall. And then reach back with them, put the opposite arm on top. You're doing prayer hands, it can be the same as before. Inhale, nice and tall. As you exhale, bring yourself forward on top of the legs, trying to keep those knees stacked on top, and then release the neck and head. One more deep breath here. Inhale, bring yourself up. You're gonna cross over both feet and come into your tabletop posture. So you're doing a lot of shoulder work, a lot of opening of the chest. So we're gonna first come into puppy pose. So in puppy pose, it's like child's pose, but you're gonna keep the bum above the knees and reach the hands forward and then drop the heart down. So it's almost like a down dog, but we're on our knees. So really thinking about dropping the heart towards the ground as much as you can. Try to really stretch out the shoulders. You're gonna to wanna to like push into the hands and resist a bit, but try to just drop into it Release the forehead or the chin to the mat. With each exhale, see if you can sink the heart a little bit lower. Next inhale, you're gonna walk yourself back up to that uh, tabletop posture, hips over knees, hands pressed firmly into the mat, grip the mat, with your fingertips, give a little micro bend to the elbows. Push into the tops of the feet so much that the knees lift an inch off. Lengthen the spine, nice and long, gaze stays down. One more deep inhale. Exhale, let the knees come back to the mat, but keep that activation. Let that right leg travel back, right? Nice long spine all the way from the crown of the head, feeling back of the neck lengthen. And then imagine the spine traveling all the way down to that right heel, nice long leg. 
deep inhale here. As you exhale, curve and round, bring the knee towards the chest, nose towards the knee. Inhale, reach, maybe extending that left hand, maybe keeping it right here on the ground. Exhale, curve and round. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, curve and round. Inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale. Stretch it out here. Let's drop that left hand down. Exhale that right foot out to the side. Call these fire hydrants. And drop that foot down. So it should feel like a real intense power when you're holding that leg there. Yeah, lots of core work, lots of hip work. We're gonna inhale the left hand up to the sky, coming into a twist. As you exhale, thread the needle under, reaching that left hand towards the foot. And then your right hand can either stay right here in front of your face. You can reach it forward and get that nice long side body, or you can bring it up and over and tuck it in the hip. Find what feels good and works for you. Another added challenge if you want, you have that right hand out, pushing into the back of the left hand, pushing in top of the right hand. You might play again with that little fire hydrant, or you might just play with pointing that foot straight back. Just a little balance game, a little balance to play around with. You can just stay right here and enjoy that shoulder stretch. Let's all bring that right hand back in front of the face so we can inhale, push that left hand up to the sky. Exhale, come back to that tabletop. Inhale, exhale, let's just take a couple cat cows to neutralize. Think about recentering the hands under the shoulders, knees over hips. Pushing into the tops of the feet and come back to that neutral spine. Really stretch out the back of the neck as well. Left leg taps back. Let's make that nice long line. Inhale, left leg comes up. Exhale, curve and round, bring the knee towards the nose. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, really lift that leg as close as you can into your chest. Inhale, maybe that right arm comes into the mix. Exhale, we can get in a tight, tight, tight ball. Inhale, really lengthen. Push all that air out. Inhale deeply. Last one here, curve and round. Inhale, lengthen. Drop that right hand down. Come into that little fire hydrant. See if we can pause for even just a second. Drop that left foot down. All right, inhale, right arm up, coming into that twist. Exhale, thread the needle, drop the right shoulder down and pushing firmly into the edge of that left foot. Either walk that left hand forward, get that nice straight line, maybe tuck. Make sure you're just relaxing the neck and head wherever you end up. If you want that nice straight line and you want to play with a little lift, either just coming maybe for a couple, lift the toe off the ground even, or it might feel good if you want to try to play with stretching that all the way back. It's obviously a little bit more balanced, a little bit more core. I'll bring that foot back down. It's not there already. Left hand in front of the face. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, back into that. Tabletop, just a couple cat cows, neutralize the spine. Really push up on that cat, all about the belly. One more round. Moving with your breath, staying connected to the breath. And coming back to neutral. All right, we are going to come into our plank for a moment here. All right, pushing firmly into the hands. If this is too much, just drop the knees down and keep that nice straight line. So as long as if the knees come down, just make sure to drop the belly a little bit, All right? Nice straight line there, pushing into the fingertips. Really nice and strong. One more deep breath. 
Use the exhale to push yourself back into our first downward facing dog. Pedal out your feet. Take your time to settle into that down dog. Wake the tail, lift the feet, whatever feels good for you. And then eventually come into some stillness in our down dog. So thinking really about not letting all the weight fall into the heel of your hand, but pushing into all the length of the fingertips, the pads of the hands, letting the chest draw down towards the ground, releasing the neck and the head, lifting the hips, getting light in the hips, and letting the weight drop into the heel. So really balancing the weight between the heels and the hands. One more deep breath here. Inhale, you're gonna come to the tiptoes, exhale, Step or walk yourself to the front of your mat. Inhale, half lift. Hands can be on the ground, the shins. Just make sure we get that nice, straight 90 degree angle. Exhale, deep fold. Bring the chin to the chest to lengthen the back of the neck. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. Press the palms together, keeping that upper body active as you exhale, bring the hands to heart center. Coming into our Surya Namaskare. Inhale. Exhale, diving down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Step it back to plank, making your own vinyasa here. So maybe you want to drop the knees. Bring the elbows in nice and tight. Roll the shoulders back. Push into the tops of the feet. Baby cobra. Exhale, let yourself come back down, either pushing through the knees or straight up through push up, and then back to downward facing dog. Three deep breaths here. When we find this stillness, reconnecting with that intention, knowing as the body slows down, the mind speeds up, it's a great time to use that tool. Inhale to the tiptoes. Exhale, bring yourself to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, deep fold, tuck the chin. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up, press into the palms firmly all the way down. And coming into round two, inhale, arms up. Exhale, hinging at the hips. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step walker, float it back into your plank, landing with soft elbows, lowering ourselves all the way down or to our chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, upward facing dog. Exhale, roll it back, push back, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths. Inhale to the toes. Exhale, bring yourself forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, tuck the chin. Inhale, sweep it all the way up. Press those palms together all the way down firmly. Third and final round. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, take it back. All the way down. Inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths. See if those heels are maybe sinking a little bit lower. Maybe those hips are feeling a little lighter. Think about your triceps really hugging your face. So you're externally rotating the triceps. Inhale to the toes. Exhale, bring yourself to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, deep fold. Tuck the chin. Inhale, bring the arms all the way up. 
Exhale, hands to heart center. Bring the feet together. Zip the legs together. Stand nice and tall. Push into the palms and close the eyes. Feel yourself steady. This first little balance. Next, inhale, bring the arms back up. Exhale, hinge and dive down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step it back. Either push back downward facing dog or you can take this flow. So you can always get this little flow or just by coming into down dog a little early. We all meet there anyways. Inhale that right leg up to the sky. Check that the toes are pointing down and the hips are squared. And you're down, we're facing dog. One more deep breath. As you exhale, bring the knee towards the chest, come to step in between the hands. And you can choose if you'd like to drop that back knee or keep it lifted, up to you. Inhale, drop the hips, gazing up, opening the heart. Exhale, as you push that right hip back, straighten both legs. Inhale, forward. Exhale, push it back. Keep moving with your own breath. And think about keeping your ankle, knee, and hip in alignment. Sometimes you push that right hip out. Really think about keeping yourself on, you know, those that, like you got little train tracks for your feet and the whole body's aligning there. One more. Once we come into that lunge again, we'll hold there. Plant that left hand, inhale, right hand, open up to the sky. Deep inhale, exhale, bring that right hand down. This time we're gonna switch it up a little bit. So you're gonna bring that right hand inside and heel toe that right foot out towards the edge of your mat. So we're in lizard pose. So our right arm can connect with our right leg. We spread our palms firmly and a little bend in our elbows. And you can stay right here. Yes, it's an intense stretch on that left hip flexor. Or if it's available, try dropping down onto that left forearm. All right, we're going in phases. If you feel like you can also drop that right forearm, you can try that as well. If this is way too intense, you can also drop that back knee. All right, lots of options. Take your lizard pose for two more deep breaths. Next inhale, start by bringing that right arm, right hand, and then left hand, and then push the hips back, which should feel really good. Walk yourself around now to the edge of your mat, wide-legged full, toes slightly point in, inhale, half lift. Exhale, let gravity do the work, bringing you down into a forward fold. Take your arm variation of choice, maybe opposite ankle or ankles or reaching the hands through to bring the crown of the head lower or just on the forearms or up on the hands. Wherever you need to be, let's take two more deep breaths. Release the head down, lengthen the back of the neck. Inhale, bring yourself back up to that half lift. Exhale, bring yourself to the back of your mat over that left leg. As you inhale, drop the hips, looking up. As you exhale, push the hips back, drop the head down, bring the chin to the chest. So we're involving the whole spine here by including our neck. Thinking about those train tracks and keeping the ankle, knee, and hips aligned on that left leg now. Dropping the knee if you need to, or if it feels better. 
We'll meet in that front lunge. Plant your right hand, inhale, left hand up to the sky. Stack the shoulders. You can look straight ahead. If it's okay on the neck, you can gaze up to that left thumb. Keep a little micro bend in that right elbow. Protect the elbow. Grip into the right fingertips. Deep inhale, exhale, bring it down. Now coming into lizard pose on this side, all right? Bring that left hand inside the left leg. Push into the hands just as if you're in plank, all right? See if you can bring out first that right forearm. If it feels okay, you might be able to also come down on the left forearm, all right? You can always drop that knee down and untuck the toes if you need to. Two more deep breaths in our lizard pose. Whichever variation you're at, you're gonna get a good stretch. Slowly coming up one forearm at a time if you're down. And then we're gonna push ourselves back into that wide-legged fold. Toes pointed in, heels out. Maybe heel toe the feet a little bit wider this time. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, deep fold, drop yourself down, hang wherever you land. Trying to release the glutes and thighs, allowing gravity to do the work. Next, inhale, come back up to that half lift. Exhale, bring yourself towards the front of your mat. Step that right foot back. You can flow here or push back downward facing dog. You can always take the flow at a modified rate. So coming with through with the knees and that sort of thing, just to give yourself assistance. All right, let's drop down to the knees for a moment and just take a little breather in child's pose. So sit the hips back as far as you can. Bring the head down to the mat. You can keep the hands stretched out, or you can push into the palms and come into a little reverse prayer action, which will stretch out those triceps a bit. Strengthen the shoulders as well. Let's take one more deep breath there. All right, and as you're ready, we'll come back and meet in downward facing dog. Inhale that right leg up to the sky. This time we're going to open the hips. So let the heel fall towards the bum as you point that right knee up towards the sky. One more deep breath. As you exhale, bring that knee forward. Come to step in between the hands. We're going to come into high lunge now. So you're going to stay on the ball of your foot, but if you feel really unbalanced as we come up, you can drop that heel down more into a warrior one. So our goal is to be here to keep strengthening the calf and the glute here. But if you feel like you're way too off balance, just drop that back heel. All right. So in our high lunge, we want to keep the knee over the ankle and think about that train track as well. So check that that right hip isn't pointing out. Everything's aligned. Toes are nice and wide. All right. And then you can inhale the arms up as you're ready. If this doesn't feel good on the shoulders or neck, you can always push into the palms as well. It's got that same um, upper body engagement. All right. So here we're going to transition into our eagle pose here. So just mentally preparing. Not there yet, but our left leg is going to come and wrap around on top of our right and then we'll get our arms sorted. So we're gonna to try to do this as gracefully as possible. On our next inhale, we're gonna bring that left leg forward and around, and you can kickstand the toes onto the ground, or you can try to wrap the foot around and obviously have more of a bit of a balance. All right, bring the arms straight ahead. So our right arm is gonna go under our left. All right, pushing into the palms, Lift the elbows up to become parallel with the mat. 
if you feel all right here, you might then also try to sit back more into like a chair. Always eagle, not necessary. But you can play with that. One more deep breath here. We're gonna slowly unwind everything back into that high lunge. Keep that nice, strong standing leg as you come back into your high lunge. All right, from here, we're gonna come into a modified warrior three. So you're gonna just bring the hands down to the mat and then bring yourself up onto that right standing leg. So hands are gonna stay on the ground for this round. Now we want the hips squared so that back toe is pointing down at the ground. One more deep breath here. And then slowly let that left foot come back into a low lunge. So we're staying down here. Plant the hands, step that right foot back, flow or not to flow, or maybe a modified flow with the knees down. Inhale, exhale, downward facing dog. Taking it to the other side, we're gonna inhale that left leg up, point the knee up to the sky, heel comes towards the bum. Open that hip, deep inhale here. Exhale, come to step in between the hands, prepare for that high lunge or warrior one if that makes you feel a little bit more stable. Knee over ankle, toes nice and wide, back legs super fired up and straight, either hands to heart center or bringing the arms up, coming into our full crescent pose. All right. Just mentally preparing where we're going. We're gonna take care of that right leg first. So as you take your next inhale, you're gonna come wrap that right leg on top, all right? This time, left arm's gonna go under the right. Push into the palms. If this does not work for you, you can also just push into the hands like so, all right? This foot can be on the ground at like a kickstand or you can work towards wrapping it. Lift the elbows, sink the hips a little bit more if you can, all options. Gazing forward, one more deep breath. Next inhale, we're gonna slowly, gracefully unwind back into that high lunge, arms come up. As you exhale, the hands are gonna come down to the ground and then we'll just kick off onto that left strong standing leg that's probably getting tired. Keep the hands on the ground this round so you can look back and get the right toes pointing down to the ground, hips are squared. One more deep breath. Walk the hands back so you can step that right foot back to a low lunge. Left foot follows, flow or not to flow. So many options. Exhale, we'll all meet in downward facing dog. Let's walk the hands back towards the feet. So we're in a forward fold at the back of our mat. Grab opposite elbow, shake up the head yes and no. Just take a few moments to reconnect with your breath, with your intention. Feel the Back of the neck, stretch out. You can stay right here if you're just really enjoying this. <laughs> or you can reach the hands up and back and try to clasp the hands and continue a bit of that heart opening. So I'm gonna push my palms together and just come into a nice shoulder stretch here. Maybe shake out the head one more time. And then we'll slowly all release our hands back down to the ground and walk ourselves back into that downward facing dog. All right, we'll add on a little bit here. Inhale that right leg up to the sky. Open the hips, point that knee up. All right, you can hold right here. We're gonna add in a little core work. So you either stay right here and focus on that upper body strength 
or we're going to bring it forward and tap that right elbow. Inhale, open it back up to that hip opener. Exhale, this time bring it across the body, left elbow. Inhale, hip opener. Exhale, this time we're all going to move forward and step it down, preparing for that high lunge. All right. Let's all just drop that back heel for a second and enjoy the stretch. So just gonna talk us through what we're gonna do so you can mentally prepare and choose what's right for you. One option will be to do exactly what we just did, all right? Option two is we're gonna play with going from uh, eagle into warrior three without that step back sort of transition, all right? So we'll be in our eagle pose and we'll unwrap our leg and come into that eagle warrior three. You might say, no, nah, not for me. I'm going to step back first and then I'm going to come. Or you might just say, I'm just going to do warrior three, do some airplane arms or other variations. But yogi's choice. I'll walk you through what you can do. So we'll come back into that high lunge, get on the ball at foot if that feels all right for you. All right. Our arms are up overhead. And we're going to transition to our eagle. So our left leg is going to come on top of right. Right arm is going to come under left. Inhale, raise those elbows up, sink it down. One deep breath here. All right, so our next inhale, we're going to stand up a little bit and try to bring that left leg back coming into warrior three here. <laughs> as I fall out. All right, hands can be on the ground. Heads can be straight out like airplane arms. Arms can be straight ahead, or you can keep that eagle arms. We got one more breath here. You got this. This time we're gonna drop that left leg back. Inhale all the way up to our like reverse crescent. Elbows point up to the sky. Exhale, release the hands up top. So that right leg is screaming. So we're gonna inhale to warrior two, just to open up that hip, release that right glute. Inhale to reverse. Exhale to windmill it all the way down. Step it back to plank. Slowly lower down or push back. You guys are doing great. We are working on that one-legged strength today. Whew. Inhale that left leg up, open the hip, deep inhale here. Exhale, bring it to that left tricep. Inhale, kick it up. Exhale, bring it across the body. Inhale it up. Exhale, bring it through. Preparing for our high lunge. Active arms up above or pressing our palms together. Deep inhale, exhale. Here we go, inhale, bring that right leg on top of left. Left arm under right, push into the palms. Lift the elbows up, sit back into that chair. All right, you make the decision if you wanna transition back through that crescent or on our next inhale, Bring that right leg back, balancing, coming into that warrior three with eagle arms. Maybe bring it to airplane arms or prayer, whatever feels good for you. Maybe hands are on the ground. One more deep breath. As we inhale, we're gonna drop that back foot. Inhale to reverse crescent. Balance, balance, balance. Exhale, release the arms. Coming into warrior two, just shake out that hip a little bit. Inhale to reverse. Exhale, windmill the hands down. Step it back, either downward facing dog or a last little flow here. Exhale, down dog. We're all gonna take breaking child's pose. Drop the knees, sit the hips back, relax the head down.
couple deep breaths there, reconnecting with that intention, reconnecting with the breath, maybe grabbing a sip of water if you need it. All right, so we're gonna work. Been working on our shoulders along the back side a lot. We're gonna just come up onto our knees for a minute and take one more little opener here. So bring the arms back behind you, interlace the fingers, inhale, gazing up, exhale. So we're doing like a child's pose, but with our hands grasped together. If this feels too intense, you can also grab opposite elbow. Really try to think about drawing that fist up towards the sky and pressing the palms together rather than splaying the wrists and the fingers. One more deep breath. Exhale, release the hands down along your side body. Let the shoulders totally surrender curving towards the earth. All right. Now bringing the arms in front of you, you're going to bring the forearms directly under the shoulders. And you can choose here. For me, I like to push into my hands and keep pushing into my wrist crease because this is good prep for shoulder stand. If you have no desire whatsoever, to do shoulder stand. This might be simpler by bringing the palms together and just coming in to make that triangular pose. All right, so we're gonna come into dolphin so you can take what works best for you. If you um, just take your arm variation and then you're gonna bring the hips over the knees, tuck the toes and bring yourself up to what looks like down dog but you're on your forearms, All right? Let the Crown of the head drop towards the ground, but do not put the crown of the head on the ground because we're just building shoulder strain. See if you can step the toes a little bit closer. Really engage the core, belly button, spine. Staying right here or see if you can lift that right leg up and tap it down. Lift it for five. Tap. Four. Three, tap, two, tap, one, tap. Take it to the other side. Really push into the wrist crease. Inhale, bring it down for five, tap, four, tap, three, tap, two, tap, one. Whew. Drop down the knees. Back into child's pose. Really stretch out the arms. And we're gonna tuck the toes to bring ourselves up into downward dog just briefly to come into our pigeon pose. So if it works for you, you're gonna bring that right leg forward, walk those left toes back. If this doesn't feel good for you, you can take um, Figure four, I can't think of what number it was. Figure four on, the, on your back as well. So inhale, as you exhale, you wanna bring yourself not just down, but also lengthen forward. All right, maybe on the forearms, maybe you can drop the head all the way down. Maybe you wanna grab a block or a pillow nearby, something soft to put the head on and completely relax there. And of course, as we slow down, the mind speeds up. So use the tools of the breath and the intention to keep you here. Next inhale, you're gonna bring yourself back up and simply change sides, maybe through down dog, maybe just bringing that leg around, coming onto the left, walking the toes back, 
Inhale, nice and tall, exhale, forward and down. Sometimes I even use sort of like a visualization here as I'm starting to slow down. Just seeing that breath travel along the spine like energy, bringing that energy to that left hip. Next inhale, you're gonna bring yourself up, bring the toes back and you're gonna come all the way on to your belly. All right, we're gonna open the arms out to a T. Take one last little shoulder stretch here. Pushing the left hand and palm into the ground, bending that right knee, you're gonna roll yourself onto the left shoulder. Relax the neck and head. You can keep that right hand right here in front of the face, or you might be able to come up and reach it. Some people can clasp their hands. My body doesn't do that. So I just let my hand tuck back behind my lower back. You can reach it, go for it. One more deep breath. Exhale, rolling back on to your belly, just taking that to the other side. So press into that right palm. Use that left hand to roll yourself over onto the right side. Lift that left hand up. Maybe it comes to connect, maybe not. And just drop it back to open that chest and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Next inhale. Bring yourself back onto your belly. Push yourself back into one last little child's pose. Bring yourself up into onto the knees. So we're gonna take about three minutes here to take an inversion of choice. So we've done some shoulder work. So I will show a little bit of shoulder stand prep. If you know that's not for you, you can do, um, I'm sorry, not shoulder, forearm stand is what I mean to say. So we're gonna try to do some of this work. If you wanna take a shoulder stand, like bringing the legs up, bringing the legs to the wall, taking your own headstand, whatever floats your boat, just important to get a couple minutes of inversion time at the end of our practice before we come into our Shavasana. So I'm gonna show you a couple options. I'm gonna bring myself to the wall because I don't practice forearm stand without the wall. So option one is you bring your feet really super close to the wall. You come on to your forearms, just like we did into that dolphin pose, right? And you might stay here for today or you might play with bringing yourself up into a pike posture with the forearms. And that just shows you a little bit more what it's like to bring the weight and you might lift a leg, you might lift the other leg. You might not and stay right here in dolphin. So that's one option. If you've practiced that a lot before, you can also take forearm stand with your back to the wall and play with kicking up a little bit. All right, so when we do that, it's really thinking about pushing the wrist crease into the floor and use a little spring load. Play with maybe a few breaths there. All right. So take your turn to play, right? This is also a great option, is bum to the wall <laughs> and feet up. Um, final option I'll give, since you're probably already doing your own thing anyways, is just bringing the feet up the wall into a supported shoulder stand here. And this is more of a true inversion than feet up the wall because true inversion hips are higher than your heart. But there's still just as much support. You can even bend the knees. Be lazy. We'll take another minute. So take whatever inversion practice is good for you today.
if you are done with inverting, you can also just work your way towards Shavasana on your back. After you invert, make sure you take a little time in child's pose to neutralize the neck, to neutralize spine. And we'll all eventually come to lay on our backs. All right, once you're there, just bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a little rock side to side. You can allow the knees just to fall over to one side or before you do that, I like to bring my hips over to the right, cross my right leg over my left, and then let my knees fall over to the left. It's a little bit more intense of a twist, but really brings you out at the end. I'm bringing the arms out to a T and I'm gonna bring my gaze over to my right hand, the opposite way of your knees. Slowing the breath. Next inhale, bringing the knees through center. I'm gonna take that same thing on your side. Bring the hips over to the left a little bit. Left leg crosses over right. Drop the knees over to the right. Open the arms out to a T. Gaze over that left shoulder. Slowly unwinding, bringing yourself back to center. Might feel good just to take one more little happy baby. Or maybe just rock the head side to side, but bringing yourself into your comfortable Shavasana. Letting the legs and feet fall out to the sides. Bringing the shoulder blades under the body, bringing the glutes under the body, letting the arms lay out, allowing the eyes to close, relaxing all the way through the feet, the legs, the hips, allowing the breath to return to a natural state so you can release the abdomen and chest, relaxing the shoulders all the way down the arms to the fingertips. Releasing the jaw, the neck, tiny muscles in the face, the brow, and the crown of the head. Completely surrendering and honoring the spinal pose. Gently begin to deepen the breath. Inviting tiny movements into the fingers and toes. And 
And on your next inhale, bringing the arms up overhead, coming into a full body stretch. And as you exhale, bringing the knees into the chest, giving yourself a tight squeeze, giving yourself a tight hug, thanking yourself for giving yourself this time today. And then rolling on to your favorite side, pausing in the first posture, our bodies that renew. And as you're ready, bringing yourself up to a comfortable seated posture, keeping the eyes restful. Inhaling the arms up overhead, exhaling the hands to heart center. We begin to rub the palms, creating heat and energy, and placing the palms over the eyes. May we use this energy to see the beauty within ourselves and within others. Bringing the palms together once more, this time covering the ears. May we use this energy to hear positive thoughts about ourselves and about our world. Bringing the palms together once more, and this time covering the heart. May we use this energy to love ourselves fully and to live our truth. Inhaling the arms up one last time, gathering this energy. Exhale, bringing it down to the heart. Namaste.